time on the ice this year. I just don't know how I feel about it. I had like five trips here this week and it sucked every single time, so we'll see how today goes. There's the magic rig and bait right there. Simple as it gets. Treble hook. A little pathetic looking sardine. It's been in my freezer for three years. But still works. Just takes a while to get down to the bottom here. It's 18 feet and I'm not using a sinker. But I find a no sinker means they can carry it away and not feel anything. And once it hits the bottom, you just reel it up two or three feet. Seems to be where they're cruising and eating. Just following a shoreline contour here. Obviously, we're right next to the road. And it drops to like 18 feet, like really close to the shore. Actually, I'm at 16 here, but from here, it drops to my right. Okay, we're on bottom now. Reel it up a couple of feet. Let drag go super loose. Everybody's got these jaw jackers and stuff out on the ice, and uh, I don't believe in them. I'm much bigger advocate of just letting the bait run free. Get the fish a chance to eat it, then set the hook yourself when he's got it. And you know what? They don't often get deep hooked. I find you get more deep hooked fish with a tip up than with a, a rod, because there is still a little bit of tension there. Well, folks, we got our first fish on the ice. As you can see, there's a lot of blood because he took it deep. So one of us is taking him home. Captain Rick was a good captain, let me reel in his rod there. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, it was on tip up. Yeah. Reeling his line. Just letting him take it a bit. So start eating. Got a fish on here, got him. I feel very big, it's a little tiny sardine. Holes all froze up. Uh, he's a little bit bigger, I think. No. Oh, oh. Maybe a little bit. Cool. No skunks today, which, for God's sakes, I cannot believe that, because there's been a skunk every other day this week. That's on the same bait I've been using all week, too. I just downsized, that's all. Yeah, all week I've been throwing six, seven inch signers, or uh, sardines. And this was on a little three inch one that I found in my freezer. There we go. This one will go back. Let's see, he wasn't that hooked that badly. Beauty! He's probably pushing 20 inches. Something like that. Alright. I don't think they're in schools. I mean, they're just the odd one coming by. Nice thick, healthy fish. I'll take small pike over no pike any day. I'd prefer you to go back and be 40 inches one day. Then Rick will keep you. <laughs> Hot sausage! Well, Rick left me the pike. And it swallowed the hook. Otherwise, I do not condone eating pike here. It has been literally wiped out for almost five years. You could have a pike line down here, anywhere in the place, and uh, it would not get a bite pretty well, like, I don't know, maybe four years ago, it got to the point where it was like getting three bites in a winter was a good, good winter. And then the last two or three, getting any bite at all was just a rarity. Uh-oh. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even get bit off <laughs> okay still a mystery fish I have no idea what that was I think it was a little bite but anyway. 
The last one hit it right away when I did that. Got him. Yes. And I lost him. Save those for later. Need to throw some salt on those. Well, Minnow, everything's packed up. It's your last chance, right here, right now. Get smote! Smote! Get a bite! Okay, let's just pack it up. Talk about the last second. Probably gonna bite me off. The lightest freaking rod I own. You know this rod, I catch carp on it. It's impossible to tell how big he is. But I'm gonna get a small, because they're all small. Oh my god. That might be the biggest one today. It still isn't big, but still. Oh, I won't do that. Don't do that. Oh, no. <laughs> it's not done yet. I thought he was. He tricked me. Look at that hook job. A tiny teardrop. It is the biggest one today. Not that big, but it's the biggest one today. That is a rather nice pike here. He's got to be 22 inches probably. Beauty. Right as I was packing up. End of the day. Can't beat that. Beautiful. Tiny teardrop, two pound test. That's what I'm talking about. I'm gonna put him back. One pike is enough for dinner. He's gone. Okay. Oh, am I going to break through here? Oh my god. I don't know. Full send. I made it. Yeah, I don't think I'm coming back tomorrow. I just walked on an inch of ice. Goodbye, terrible lake. Goodbye, ice. Goodbye, stupid wind. Goodbye, wonderful sunset. Folks, back at the ranch. I'm not going to bore you with how to fillet a pike. If you want to search that up, there's about two and a half billion videos on YouTube of how to fillet a pike properly. It's called the five cup method. Um, yeah, we're just going to skip right ahead to the cooking portion, and then we're going to make some pike sandwiches. I'm going to scarf them down. Mmm. 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 Well, folks, Boo's helping me videotape this. We're, uh, we got our pieces of pike here. I use the five cut method, and then I cut them into smaller pieces. Kind of messed up the one side because I haven't done this in years. I suck at it. Today, we're going to marinate these bad boys in President's Choice tequila habanero sauce. President's Choice. It's what the president would choose. Yeah, we're just going to dump this in the sack. We're going to be generous with it. Because I know where to get more of this. We're going to dump our fish in the sack. Close the sack. And then we just kind of sauce it all up. Oops, and then we're just going to marinate for a few minutes. So, in the meantime, I'll sing you a song. So, for today's breading selection, we're going to use our 900 pound bag of Krusty's pancake mix. Available at Costco. 
that's our base. Pancake mix is the bomb. It is the best breading ever, period. So if you disagree, then fuck you. Then we're gonna add the, of course, chipotle mango. The more catching cooks I do, the more you're gonna be hearing about chipotle mango. Because pretty much all I use is a spice on anything, ever. We're just gonna put a metric ton in there. I'm just going to scoop this up for about 15 minutes. Look at those bad boys dripping with sauce. We'll stick them in the breading. Now, pick one that's like it a lot. I'm gonna throw these guys into the oil. Yum. We've now got our delicious buns here. That did not turn out well. <clears throat> I don't know why. Like it I'm sure it's going to taste fine, but it's like not crispy like it's supposed to be. Whatever. I'm going to pull pike sandwiches, I guess. And make two rather large fish sandwiches. There's one little pike. People don't got to keep like 50 freaking fish every time they go fishing. I don't even eat pike because I respect them. It's like eating my brother, but when they swallow the hook, the responsible thing to do is take them home. Pile them like a mountain. That's how we do it. Now we gotta make this uh, healthy, so we're gonna add some spinach. Okay. There we go. I'm we'll just gonna add some mayonnaise. Once again, for Costco, we got the five liter jug. That is really good. Despite it not coming out crispy and you know, chicken nuggety, like you expect fish to be, really, really good flavor. I'll give it a 7 out of 10 because it's missing the crispiness. But the breading on the outside is crispy. It just didn't hold together in one piece. The fish just kind of flaked apart. But, oh, decent. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed my little catch and cook video, ice fishing for pike. And if you want to see more of these in the future, make sure you leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and hit all of your friends that don't do the same thing. I love you. We'll see you next time. Ciao.